Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me. This is my music collection. We are gonna take a look inside this cabinet here behind me. I've deemed it the cabinet full of curiosities. I've uh, got over 360 CDs stored away in that. I've rearranged the cabinet. It's an old record cabinet that I've converted. I do collect vinyl, but I chose to use this to store CDs in here. And we're gonna dive into all that in just a moment. But if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed the video or know someone that would, please share it out on social media. I would also appreciate that. And I say this a bit tongue in cheek, but by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this with music collection and everything inside this cabinet. Let's open it up and take a look here. So. We open it and we see that I've rearranged the shelves in it in order to store all of these boxes. Each of those boxes holds 30 CDs. There's 12 boxes, 360 CDs in here. So let's pull one of these out. The key is the box. So this is the old record store boxes for CDs. When a brand new album came out, they ordered you know big release of it. So 30 discs would come inside here. They cut the top off. They could store it this way and easily pull them out. Whenever I could get a hold of one of these, I would. And I like it because it holds 30 discs and I use it for artists that I can group the albums plus all the solo and side projects together. And in this case, this is my rat box. You can see rat right down there towards the bottom. And there's a lot of great stuff, starting with uh, solo Stephen Piercy and moving into some side projects and all the rat. And I wanna show you guys some of this. So we've got some uh, of the solo Stephen Piercy stuff, but he also did these other things like Piercy Hagar, and uh, he put out some stuff for uh, Mickey Rat. He also had um, a project called Nitronic, short-lived, only did a live album. Then he did Vicious Delight, a more punk-related type project. He had an industrial project called Vertex. No album cover for that one. Of course, he had um, Arcade, which is absolutely fantastic. And we get into rat stuff. But my favorite is the Japanese release of Warren D. Martini's solo album, Crazy Enough to Sing to You. Uh, fantastic. Uh, this release here in 1996, he put this out. I really wish he would do another solo album. So good. Much more in the blues vein. You know, kind of imagine all the glam metal stuff stripped away. What would rat sound like? That's it. It's got uh, Frank Zappa's uh, son playing on it. Um, I think it's Dweezil. Oh, sorry. This one here, LA Guns. So all the LA Guns stuff, all the official releases by the band are in here. Uh, goes through all the different singers and everything that, that have been part of this, but there's some cool, again, Japanese releases and stuff. This one here called um, Hollywood Rehearsal. Cool cover songs by like Iggy Pop, T-Rex, Led Zeppelin, um, some other stuff on there, really good. There's this one, Live Vampires, an EP with eight tracks. They had this cool uh, covers EP called Cuts Back in the Day, 1992 release. This is great. Paul Black's LA Guns called Blacklist. So he's the original vocalist before Phil Lewis. And these are all demos from him. Then I've got some Phil Lewis solo, uh, Access Denied, More Purple Than Black. Yeah, these are signed. I have met these guys many times actually. He had a solo project, Filthy Lucre, a punk band. And before LA Guns, he was in a group called Torme. And of course I've got Girl, which is another project. I've got Phil Collin from Def Leppard on it. Tracy Gunn's solo album, Killing Machine. Lots of lots of great stuff. And that's what I like to group all of these together. I like to have the bands plus all those projects, especially when I've got someone like this, Dokken and George Lynch, where George Lynch does so much stuff. He's always recording different projects. And so grouping it together where I can have Dokken, Lynch Mob, offshoot projects and things of that nature, really great here. So in this one in particular, I wanted to point this out. Don Dawkins had a second solo album called Solitary, all acoustic sort of stuff, but we do have the classic Up From The Ashes. Really, really great. Should have been bigger than it was. Uh, George Lynch did a documentary called Shadow Train, a soundtrack. Two CDs worth of new material recorded for that. Very good. With vocals, everything. Full band. Got the great Lynch Pilsen. How can you not? I mean, half a Dawkins right there. Tooth and Nail, The In Machine. Uh, Sweet Lynch, so much more inside this box. A lot of you guys ask if I'm an Iron Maiden fan. I sure am. I've got all the Iron Maidens here. I've also got 
Bruce Dickinson grouped with this thing down at the bottom there. And uh, for that in particular, uh, we've got, um, this is a cool one. This is a uh, best of two CD disc, but the second disc is all B-sides and unreleased stuff. And then of course, you know, I've got these two CD reissues that have a lot of B-sides too. Alternate album covers uh, from Bruce Dickinson, but my favorite one, Skunk Works. I know that kind of probably surprises you guys. I got Balls Dick Picasso. And of course, how can you not have the classic Tattooed Millionaire? That one is just a fantastic one. I've also got Kiss Box. Uh, not much in the way of rare stuff in here, but I do have a Japanese album that's a re-recording of 15 Kiss classics. Later was part of the Sonic Boom album. They put it in to help sell it kind of a thing, but otherwise just all the straight albums and things of that nature. And then, um, oh, I gotta have a Deep Purple box. I love Deep Purple. There's just so much great stuff. I have a whole separate box that's all the side projects and everything. This is just Deep Purple in here. But you know they put out all these live albums and you know from australia and um you know the uk and stuff like that you know these things don't make it to the us so you get a hold of this stuff this is a really cool one here i'm a big tommy bolin fan and i love the come taste the band album and this one here 1420 beachwood drive the 1975 california rehearsals part two big title there lots of great extra tommy bolin rehearsal stuff with glenn hughes David Coverdale, of course, great lineup. This one was the first one. Days May Come, the 1975 California Rehearsals. This one just did so well, they had to put out a part two on it. And just a lot of other great deep purple in this thing. I've also got an Alice Cooper box. Can't go wrong with Alice Cooper. You know, he's really only ever been solo. Um, he has done the side project, The Hollywood Vampires, which is really great. But this thing here, so many different eras of Alice Cooper and whatnot in here. Just good stuff. I'm a big fan of Suicidal Tendencies. So I've got this stuff here. This is a cool one here. Um, Suicidal Tendencies collection, but it flips up and it opens up with this special tab in the thing and it forms a, uh, a sort of a stand on it. You can display it. It has one unreleased track, so it makes it worthwhile there. We've also got um, all the Psycho Myco and Infectious Grooves stuff. So Psycho Myco, Infectious Grooves live, double album, the Mad Mad Mirror musical tour, studio album by him, Psycho Myco, uh, what is this? This is uh, Schizophrenic, Born Again, Problem Child, Japanese only uh, issue of this thing. And his very first solo album, Lost My Brain Once Again, which incidentally, the current version of Suicidal Tendencies have re-recorded this album almost in its entirety and released it under this still psycho after all these years uh still psycho punk after all these years change the title just a little bit there self-released infectious grooves masperacho and he was part of the no mercy project and that's what this album is and some earlier stuff by no mercy and they've got all these great compilations friends and family too it's all the little side projects that he's involved in also, Welcome to Venice. And these are cool. These are on the Suicidal Tendencies record label. They got their own label. So it's a real do-it-yourself kind of thing in the old punk attitude. Got a Misfits and Danzig box that groups all that together. You know, before the Misfits with Jerry Only and Glenn Danzig reformed to do these huge stadium tours and stuff, they were still putting out EPs and things. Friday the 13th, it's a four song EP. And then this one here, Zombie Girl, which is really great. Um, Oh, a lot of people ask me, what is my favorite collectible item? And, I'm, and it's this. This is Misfits 12 Hits from Hell. It's a promo-only release. It was getting ready to come out on the Caroline label. Glenn Danzig found out and he got an injunction and stopped it. And so the album was shelved. But a few hundred of these got out to music journalists in order to write reviews. I knew someone and I got a hold of it. So I love having that. And then I've got all the Danzig stuff in here, and I've got at the bottom some of the stuff from uh, Doyle Von Frankenstein, guitar player for the Misfits. He also was in a project called Gorgeous Frankenstein, and this one here is produced by Glenn Danzig. And when this first happened here, that's when I knew something was going on, and these guys would eventually be getting back together. I've got the Misfits offshoot project, Osaka Pop Star. And even the original Danzig guitarist, John Christ, has a solo album out. Really great stuff, highly recommend it. Uh, Flesh Caffeine is the title of that thing. Uh, the next one that we've got here, 
Black Sabbath. So I've got a whole box of all the different eras of Sabbath, you know, from the 13, the most current, through the Tony Martin era, which is just fantastic. If you don't listen to Tony Martin, highly recommend it, classic stuff. But at the end of this, Tony Iommi's done a number of solo records. So this one here with uh, Glenn Hughes on it and another one with him fused, really great. And then he had a solo album in which he just self-titled like this, all guest singers. And so it's got Henry Rollins, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, Phil Anselmo from Pantera, uh, Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, Peter Steele from Typo Negative, Ozzy's on here, and Billy Idol is on it. And then how can you not have Heaven and Hell, right? The Dio reunited lineup from the Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules era. Great stuff there, all collected together. Easy for my access, that's the biggest thing. I can just pull the whole box out and listen to whatever I want. This one here, a Metallica box. All, of course, the Metallica stuff, but I got some cool things in here like Injustice for Jason. This one here turns the bass up on Injustice for All, mixes it properly, because if you, you know, if you didn't know, the bass was turned down in it. Um, you know, they don't have any greatest hits. So I found some of these radio station mandatory Metallica ones. This one here collects up 11 tracks from the first album through Master of Puppets. They later did another one. This one here, it's hard to see, but it's called Saint and Anger, a two CD set that collected up material from pre-Saint Anger and put out to promote that album. Then we've got some record store day releases like Live at Grimey's and some EP Six Feet Down Under from Australia. There's even a part two to it. My favorite thing though actually is this, All Within My Hands, an acoustic album that they did. Available on their website, it's got When a Blind Man Cries by Deep Purple, Please Don't Judas Me by Nazareth, Veteran of the Psychic Wars by Blue Oyster Cult. Really, really great stuff. And as I said, you can get that off their website. So a lot of great stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye, everyone.